What is going on guys? Dayton here, aka Dr. R Flower, and we are back with another episode. Today we're gonna get into controversial growing techniques. So there's a few controversial growing techniques out there. Some say you should do them, some say you shouldn't do them. And uh, there is a bit of controversy online about these. So some people feel really strongly one way, some people feel really strongly the other way. So we're gonna get into these today. But before we get into that, make sure you smash the like button down there. Also, leave a comment. If you got any questions, we're going to be doing another Autoflower question and answer series soon. Uh, also, make sure you hit the notification bell. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. It's free. And uh, I always put out lots of informational videos, help you with growing, help you with your uh, 420 lifestyle. So again, if you can smash that like button down there, it really helps and I really appreciate it. And uh, let's get right into the video, guys. So the first technique we're going to get into is monster cropping. So monster cropping is the technique of taking a clone from your plant of a photo period plant while it's in flower. Now you can't do this with auto flowers. This is a photo period only technique. So in monster cropping you would take the clone while it's in flower and you would revert it back to veg and then grow it from there. And the reason why they do that is because it promotes more bushy plants. So when you mix that with let's say a, a scrog, a sea of green uh, kind of style grow where you're growing smaller plants in a smaller area but you want them bushy and and you want them to produce as much uh, stems and as get get as bushy as possible um, it can actually be beneficial and increase your yield and now when you're doing this it is a little harder than normal cloning because when you're taking a clone from a flowering plant uh, it just seems less likely to take and you're more susceptible for running into things like it just uh, going moldy or something or just getting, I don't know if, if, if they get diseases or whatever, but a lot of them I've noticed died. Um, so it really depends on when you're taking it. The further you go down the road, the harder it will be to uh, clone it. Uh, the further the buds get, you know. Um, normally you can get away with it at around like week three of flower. I think for me that's probably the latest time I've ever took in a clone from a plant. Usually for me I always go for the bottom and the least amount of bud growth on it so it's not like really shocking to the plant. But when done properly uh, with training techniques uh, and if it works in your situation then it can definitely be beneficial. So if you don't know when you're cloning uh, a flowering plant, what will happen is it will go through a re-veg phase once you like clone it and put it back in veg. And it seems to stress the new clone out and it'll produce weird looking leaves for about a month or so and then revert back to uh, regular leaf form formation. But these stresses also help it kind of bush out more, get more bushy it seems like. Now some people may want that, maybe some people won't want that. Uh, I think it also would depend on your genetics, like uh, maybe you got some really lanky stuff, so maybe you want that with that more lanky genetics, but if you already have genetics that's really bushy already, maybe you wouldn't. So what are the advantages of monster cropping? You can have continual harvests without the need of mothers. Uh, normally that's kind of what I do for when I'm growing photo periods. I don't really keep mothers around. Now I only do this when I maybe have run into an issue and I didn't take a clone during veg or maybe my clone died when I took it during veg and it's like a last resort for me when I do it. But it's always best for the likelihoodness of the clone living if you take it during veg compared to flower. So it's usually a last ditch maneuver for me just to try to save that genetics. Um, I'm not really trying to monster crop that. I'm just accidentally doing it kind of. So the other advantages are it maximizes yields and it also helps with your growing techniques you're using. It like combines and makes it all work better. So if you're doing fimming, lollipopping, LSTing, uh, but it also works better or best some people say with the scrog or sea of green kind of style growing. So definitely something to check out if that works for you. The disadvantages are it doesn't work for auto flowers. Also not all cuttings will be successful. Some will die, probably I would say more than half could die from what I found. It really depends on when you're taking them, uh, on which week you're taking them. Once you go past that week three, it gets a little iffy. And the other thing is it takes time. So you're gonna take more time 
compared to just having a fresh plant kind of thing uh, starting over from a, a, a seed or a regular clone because when you have a flowering clone it needs to revert back into veg and that'll take time it'll stress the plant out a little bit um, but sometimes stress can be useful uh, it can help bring out the, the terps better can help bring out the trichrome production better um, so yeah a little controversial some people like it some people wouldn't really mess around with it next on the list is sea of green style of growing so this can be used with autoflowers I've done it before in the past uh, kind of an example would be running like 20 autoflowers in a 4x4 or a 5x5 I have seen that before and I have seen some crazy results um, I've done it too and uh, I wouldn't do it again though because I think it kind of works just in certain situations uh, for you know certain people who want to grow you know it's good for if you want something if you want plants done really fast or if you want to grow smaller plants uh, with a lot of them in one area so normally you would have a bunch of plants pretty much as many pots as you can fit in your grow area and you would want your plants to grow grow pretty vertical you wouldn't want them branching out too much but it does happen so that's one of the kind of disadvantages because once you have a ton of plants in there and they start bushing up really bad it could create areas where there isn't much air movement and you're more likely to get molds mildews stuff like that moldy buds bud rot um, that's kind of what you run into when you start doing too many plants in one area and when it becomes too hard to uh, keep them clean do your deleafing and whatnot making sure they're not flopping over on each other all that kind of stuff but if you have a small grow area and you are trying to get the most out of it then sea of green can be pretty beneficial and for autos if you're growing autos that don't branch out much it can be really beneficial because you can grow a lot of them in a small area and have them become really massive colas going straight up right it's like Christmas tree style and normally with like photo periods uh, when you're doing this you would want to do it as fast as possible you wouldn't want them to veg for a long time you would want them to maybe veg for a week or two and then flower them right away kinda um, I've done this before where I think I only veg my plants for like 10 days flipped them into flower and it came out with some pretty decent results with only having 10 days of uh, veg uh, I think I have a time lapse of that if you look back that was back when I had my uh, 4x8 tent uh, I think it was one of my last uh, time lapse videos of my 4x8 tent like three years ago if you guys want to check that out so it can be pretty damn beneficial if you're growing in a small area and you want to grow lots of plants but it makes it you know it's a, a bit more work you're watering a lot more plants there's gonna be more humidity because there's more soil more water and more plants exhausting moisture into the air so all that adds up and you have to deal with it so that's kind of the the negative side you got to keep it very nice and clean you don't want your plants going moldy or getting powdery mildew or or if you get bug infestations during that it can be really annoying so those are definitely things you got to watch out for but it can be very beneficial to people and next let's get into defoliation so when I first started in autoflowers defoliation was a pretty damn big controversial topic a lot of people were going back and forth there was a lot of arguments I've seen back in the day how some people say you should never ever remove your leaves your fan leaves anything just leave them all uh, because they are all like uh, solar generators each leaf is helping your autoflower grow get stronger faster bigger growth uh, and then there's on the other side there's people who said no you got to defoliate you must do it you have to really defoliate them so the bud sites can grow up and and form and get light and and I fall somewhere in between so um, I'm very selective with my defoliation it's very strategic you you want to it's a balance you want to take enough off where you're getting light penetration to the lower plant but you also don't want to take too much off because they are solar generators for your plants so it helps produce food and energy and helps growth so if you took too much off yes it helps produce the hormone for the plant to produce more leaf but you're also losing that energy that it could be using to get as big as it can during veg when it's super important 
that's why I usually tend to do more low stress training during veg and then once it's in flower I would do a bit of uh, defoliation around week four or five with an autoflower. Uh, it really depends. I'm more, if you can leaf tuck, I say leaf tuck. And if you can leave it, leave it on. If not, if it's causing issues, if, if leaves are covering each other and you lift them up and you're seeing moisture and stuff, then you might want to uh, remove them because if left like that, the leaves producing moisture and sitting on each other could end up producing powdery mildew or something like that down the road. Um, so it is, it is a balance. And when you're new, it can be a little uh, overwhelming, but it's all, it's like any skill. Once you start learning it, you'll, it becomes second nature and you'll, you'll learn how to balance it and you'll learn how to take off the leaves when you need to take them off. Um, there is certain times when it's beneficial, sometimes when it's not beneficial. So the benefits of uh, defoliating is it opens up the bottom of the plant usually, usually the bottom one third I just lollipop it, I just take it completely off because it's not really helping and I don't want to have it send energy down below and produce bud sites down below because you don't want that. You want it all the energy going upwards to the top two thirds of the plant. So the defoliation helps the airflow. That's one of the main things with defoliation. It helps get the air going through the plants so there's no uh, pockets where it's just like there's no air movement because that's bad you don't want stagnated air and it also helps with light penetration so the light can get down to the lower buds and so the lower branches can branch out more uh, you really want those lower branches branching out more really helps with the overall plant size and helps it become a nice good bush because you kind of want it like a big bush with all the buds kind of at the same level so they're all getting the same light that's what you really want the next controversial growing technique would be pesticides, using pesticides in the grows. So me being OCD, I do not mess with chemical pesticides. I would absolutely avoid, I would throw out my garden before I use that, before I ever even thought about smoking it. Um, I just do not do it. Uh, I've seen people say, oh yeah, I'm spraying my plants with all this stuff and I don't care and just like, me, I, I cannot do that. I do have like a herbal peppermint kind of mixture that is organic and safe, but I would only use it on my veg plants, never ever my buds. It says you can use it on your buds, I just wouldn't. If it's in veg, then I can spray my plant down after with water if I need to and wash the plant or whatever before I actually put it into flower. Um, but if it was actually into flower, I just wouldn't. Some people don't have any issue with it. I have a major issue with it. I feel that it wrecks the flavor of the plants and I just don't want to be smoking that stuff. I don't want to be smoking anything extra on my buds. I want my buds to be as pristine and as clean as possible. So yeah, for me, it's pretty controversial. Um, you know, outdoors, people seem to use a lot more pesticides. Most growers nowadays are using organic pesticides, but back in the day, and even in the legal market here in Canada, there was people getting in big trouble because they're using bad pesticides that you should not be using for human consumption because it's cancerous and all that kind of stuff. Uh, people were doing that, and who knows what they used back in the day for, for the illegal market and whatnot. I'm sure there was some stuff that you would not want to be smoking and it was just in the market and you know. I'm sure there was growers back in the day who just didn't care and just said whatever, spray it, who cares. Um, so yeah, that's probably one of the most controversial things, especially in the legal market, if people uh, find out that companies have been using that, it can absolutely ruin the trust of that company. There's companies here in Canada still to this day that I refuse to even ever try, ever give money to because they were using pesticides and it came out in uh, when they got caught by Health Canada. So definitely controversial using it. Uh, indoors here, I absolutely avoid it as much as possible. I've only used it during veg and only during like when I had my terrible outbreak of spider mites and whatnot. Um, I just ended up tossing everything after that and just wiping those spider mites completely out give them no living space or no plants to live on and that's how I got rid of them. 
Um, but for other people, they don't mind it as much. They see organic, whatever. They don't care. They smoke it. Me, I'm just too paranoid for that stuff. So yeah, definitely controversial. Let me know in the comments section below. Do you use pesticides? Do you use it only for veg? Do you use it during flower too? Uh, do you have organic pesticides or do you use some other stuff? Let me know in the comments section. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear what you guys uh, do or use for your plants. And the last thing we're going to get into is the technique of flushing. So it was never a controversial subject until about, I think, two, three years ago. But when a nutrient company came out with a study they did two, three years ago, and they said nutrients can be used throughout the plant's life, even up all the way till harvest with uh, never needing to flush. And there is no difference. There is no noticeable difference at all compared to a plant that's been flushed. Um, I would really have to disagree with that. Now this information completely flies in the face of everything everyone was taught beforehand. That was a big thing when I was learning to grow on forums. Everyone saying you have to flush your plants. You have to run two to three times the amount of water to the amount of soil you have at the end when there's two weeks left to get all that nutrients out. So it stops taking nutrients from the soil and starts using the nutrients from the leaves and uses up all the nutrients in the plant. Uh, so the blood, so the buds taste better, cleaner, smoke better, uh, less black ash and whatnot. And when this, and when the study came out, there was a lot of arguments going on. Everyone was up in there like, this is crazy. Oh, the reason why I say take it with a grain of salt is because it's a nutrient company. I understand marketing. The reason why they did it, it was to cause the controversy. So everyone starts talking about it and in tail, they start talking about the company that did it. It was a small nutrient company that I've never heard of. Uh, I think they did it to get their name out there um, just to get recognition. Um, I would say there's just far, far, far too many variables to say that's conclusive because one, they didn't have well-known people go and test this. Uh, it wasn't documented. They should have documented and filmed the entire thing, how much nutrients they were using, all this kind of stuff. Everything should have been well documented and they should have gave it to connoisseurs to smoke it. And they should have, it should have been really well done uh, for it being such a controversial thing. Um, so that's why I see a lot of holes in it, a lot of flaws. Um, cause like the way they said they tested the smoke was, oh, they gave it to, I think 10 random workers or, or something like that, or just 10 random people. And from my experience, there's a lot of people out there who have no idea. They can't tell the flavors from plants. They, they have no idea if it's good weed or bad. Um, I've, I've smoked with a lot of people. I'm like, oh, this, this has really nice hints of, uh, cushy flavors and all that. And they're like, I don't, it just tastes like weed. I don't know. They have no idea. They, there's people out there who just don't have a taste or a tongue for smoke. Just like some people, like there's connoisseur wine drinkers who can tell all the notes and the berries and all the stuff in wine. And you know, the same thing with, for, uh, same thing for bud. Um, so when you don't have those professionals telling you this kind of stuff, I'd say it's a little iffy on that, uh, the, those results they gave. So that's my take on it. I've done it both ways and I had some plants that came out pretty damn decent and I didn't flush them at all. Uh, but I also had some that were just headache weed, uh, burnt black. Um, so I think there's just more variables in it than just saying, oh, you don't need to flush at all because the ones that flush usually always come out better, always burn white ash, better smoke, better flavor, uh, not headache weed. Cause if it's giving you a headache, um, for me, I'm super sensitive to certain, like I can tell if it's a low quality bud. Um, cause I, I'll get a headache sometimes. Uh, even the, the stuff you buy in the stores here, quarter of the stuff gives me a headache. Uh, and I just will never buy it again. Um, who knows how they grow it. I just, if, it, if there's bud that gives me a headache, then I'm just, no, I'm done. So 
that's that's kind of my take on that for me i do flushing because one why would i want to waste all that nutrients obviously a nutrient company wants you to waste that nutrients um but why would you i'd rather do a slow flush so i do a slow flush uh which is better for my setup um i do a flush for like three weeks sometimes four the way i do it is i just give water just like a regular watering water the plant as much as it needs not over watering so i'm not putting two to three times the amount of water compared to the soil i'm just giving a regular amount to water uh, just for a longer period so i still get the same effect where it uses up the nutrients but it's just not as you know labor intensive kind of so and it's just more easy going um, i i found that it works for me comes out with some very nice product and i would definitely recommend it so i guess if you wanted to try it out and waste the nutrients and give a nutrients all the way to the end of the growth i just don't see a point to it but yeah let me know what you guys do do you flush do you not flush put it down in the comment section below Let's have some uh, discussions and let me know if you guys found any difference. Did you find that it's no difference at all if you don't flush or do you always flush and you can definitely tell? Let me know in the comment section below. But I think that's it for now guys. Thank you for watching this episode. If you guys got any questions yourself on these topics, put it down below. If you guys got any questions about these topics, put it down below in the comment section and I might throw up your question in the next episode of Question and Answer. And make sure you smash that like button if you're new here. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to see when my videos go up. And that's it for now. So peace out. Catch you guys later. And uh, we got some interesting things coming in the future. So stay tuned for that, guys. And we'll catch you guys later. Peace.